If you're new to quilt making, you're probably looking for a really simple block. Um, you can check out my other vid video as well, which was about making um, log cabins. Um, this is the nine patch block. And it's called that because there are nine patches within the block. Um, and you can also get different variations of this block. They don't have to be regular squares, but this is a really easy one to, to start with, especially if you want to learn about me making points um, match and sort of practicing that skill too. I'm going to give you a little bit of quilt math first and then we'll get on and sew on. This block is quite small and you might want to make them bigger, but if you do want to make this size block, this is a three and a half inch square. Um, you can make any size that you like as long as it's divisible by three because you've got three by three as your layout on there. So this, uh, so imagine you wanted to make a six inch block, six and a half inch block. It'd be six inch once it's joined at the other side. So a six inch block would be three two and a half inch squares by three two and a half inch squares. And the reason we add that half inch is for the seam allowance. So here's a quick list. Three and a half inch square made from nine one and a half inch squares. Six and a half inch square made from nine two and a half inch squares, nine and a half inch square made from nine three and a half inch squares, and twelve and a half inch square made from nine four and a half inch squares. So twelve and a half inch square is kind of normal block size and they finish at twelve inches. So that's kind of a good one to start with, especially if you're new. Alright, let's get sewing this square. So this square is made up from two colours. You've got a dominant colour, which is one, two, three, four, five pieces and non-dominant colour which is the four. So you can make either one of them the darker fabric and either one the lighter fabric. So I'm going to make all of my blocks exactly the same because these are actually going to be the centre of other blocks. So you'll need to cut five pieces in your dominant colour and four pieces in your non-dominant colour, which I have here. Okay, and I generally sew mine together um, as chain piecing it so I don't have to keep cutting the thread. If you want you can use a little piece of fabric just to start off the thread so that you're not um, getting a knot of fabric on the first piece. This here is just my quarter of an inch seam allowance. I have these little um, seam guides that I like to stick on my machine. And the first thing you're going to need to do is sew these in rows and each row is going to have one of each together at some point. So I'm just going to go through and make three units of a dominant and a non-dominant piece together. So I'm just matching them up right sides together and then sewing a quarter of an inch seam. Once you've done that this is where I just snip off the threads behind and leave the last one underneath the foot just so that I don't have to cut the thread and then start again. You can choose to cut the thread if you'd rather. So we're going to start off, we have two pieces. Now we know we're going to have one piece where the dominant fabric is in the middle and we're going to have two pieces, two rows even, where the non-dominant piece is in the middle. So what we're going to do is just grab whichever you like at this point, line it up with the other side so that you haven't got the same, you've got two different colours touching and then you're going to do the same thing, you're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance with the right sides together to make, to finish your row of three off. So that was my top row, my middle row has the red in the middle. So I'm taking a non-dominant piece and sewing it to the left hand side. And then of course I've got my last row which is still attached to the machine. And my last square which is one of the red ones. So that's going to go to this side. Once again, I'm actually just going to remove the last two and keep that last one underneath the machine foot just for now. Then we're going to take these and we're going to press them. So what you want to do is press them to the dark side. So what that means is when you look at it from the back, those 
white um, the white fabric there will be pushed towards the red fabric so it's hiding all of that seam underneath the darker fabric so we're going to pre press them that way I'm going to press them from the front and maybe use a little bit of starch just to make sure that they're nice and flat so I'm going to do those two right now and I'll come back in a sec so now our rows are pressed flat you will see that's what the seams look like on the back and they're pressed to the back so you've got it pressed to the dark so you've got one where the seams are going inwards and one where the seams are going outwards it might be the other way around if you've got the darker colour in as the non-dominant colour rather than the lighter colour um, but this is our top row this is our bottom row and the way that you would press the seams helps us to be able to line those up so when you put those, the top row and the middle row right sides together you can use the seams on the back I don't know how well we can show this but they kind of nestle together so your seams are matching but the bulk of the seams are either side so where all the seam allowance extra fabric is either side and then you can kind of bump them up together and that means that when you sew it it'll look a lot tidier so I could just give it a little feel with my thumbs and I'm happy with those two um, little points there and there at the, both sides of the, the middle, the middle square. You can pin it if you like, I'm not a pinner so I'm not going to. And I'm going to just stitch that down. I am going to cut the thread at this point just because we've only got two pieces left on the machine. We've got the last row and we've got the main piece. Okay, so we now we need to press to the dark the final row that was still on the machine. Notice I haven't pressed this other piece yet, that's just because it's quicker to just do it all at the end. I'm going to now check where I'm going to put this last row. This is going to be the middle, so because we know that we want those to alternate. So once again, we're going to right sides together, and we're going to make sure that those seams match up best we can. You have got a little bit of give in your fabric if it's not quite straight, you can make up for it. Well, you want to make sure that those seams are matching. And then we're going to sew those rows, that, that last piece, on. And I could have used the leader fabric there if I wanted to, but I tend not to bother. It just depends on your machine. Let's put the thread. I'm going to iron it so that the majority they're going up and down from the middle just because the darker fabrics are predominantly on the top and the bottom. It does mean that the middle will be pressed to the lighter side, but that's kind of the minimal way of doing it. If you're making lots of these and you're not having any borders in between or anything, any other details in there, you're probably going to want to alternate how you press these so that you can lock them together with the seams like you did before for better points. So you're going to have somewhere you're pressing outwards from the middle and somewhere you're pressing into the middle. So I'm going to go press this now. So here's the block we've just made. As you can see the points are pretty good and that's just through that locking the seams technique. Um, this will be the centre of the block. This is three and a half inches square now. You'll notice that the outside squares are larger than the middle square and that's just because you've still got a quarter of an inch seam allowance available on all of those edges. But once those anything else has been sewn either side, those squares will be the same as the middle square. So that's a really easy quilt block for you to try.